here's why the real estate market will most likely crash and how to get rich like I did from 2010 to 2014 buying distressed assets. So you could obviously invest in any real estate company. So we'll start there with just any real estate company. And then each real estate company has a philosophy, whatever that might be. So there's there's either two kinds of philosophies. One is what we would call a cash flow philosophy, or two would be what I would call a capital gains philosophy. And the difference is very simple. Over here, we're looking to invest investors' money and buy properties for passive income. And over here, we're investing to grow the value and then to sell it at some point and scoop what would be called a capital gain. There are two very different philosophies. So when you're investing, you have to decide which side of the fence are you on. Most people in real estate syndications and most people that bought real estate are going to be on the capital gain side of the equation. They're going to try to time the market. And as we all know, that's exactly why most of them are in trouble right now. So let's take a look at how it would work. Let's say we've got a property. We'll call it property number one right here. And let's say that it's a $50 million deal. And we're going to go get both debt and equity. So we're going to get, so let's say, equity of $20 million and debt of let's say 30 million yes. you take this property to the bank and they give you an appraisal for 50 million and then they say we're going to loan you let's say 30 million dollars against it then the balance of course comes from equity the issue that we all have is that that equity and debt is all priced very differently so we all know that debt right now is probably somewhere in the six let's say to nine percent so it's going to be higher for hard money or construction or any kind of short-term debt that oftentimes comes with personal guarantees, or it could be 6%, which is kind of the prevailing rate today for a multifamily property. It's important to understand that this is a cost of the deal. In other words, when a lender is lending against this property right here, they're saying, we're going to lend $30 million against something that is worth $50 million based on an appraisal. The balance, of course, is the equity, and that's the most at risk. So the lender is what's called, or the debt is in first position. So when the equity is gone, the, the lender can now go take the property back as a form of collateral, and they can actually sell it to pay back their original debt or the loan on the property. The thing that's killing a lot of deals right now is this interest rate. If it's a floating rate, let's say it started at four or five, and now it's up to nine or 10, which could be the reality in many deals, then of course the cash flow is going down because the cost of debt or the mortgage payment monthly, if the rate's going up, the mortgage payment's going up too, and the cash flow is going down. Sec the second thing is, and this is the most important piece, because I think everyone understands the first piece, is the cost of the equity. So equity is in second position behind the debt. And equity is probably going to be in the 7% to 10% range right now. In fact, I've even heard it might even be more. If equity is 10% and I need $20 million, then what that says to me is that I need $2 million a year of cash flow out of this property just to pay the equity has nothing to do with the debt or any of the other expenses. This is $2 million that this property must cash flow in order just to service the equity. So this is the balance between cash flow and capital gains. Because in this particular situation, if I'm a cash flow guy and I need to service $2 million a year and this property only produces $1 million, let's say, then I am not servicing the equity. And this is precisely the problem that most people are in today. Yeah. And this is exactly why we haven't bought much in the last three years, because this math has not worked for two reasons. Number one, this price of the property has continually gone up. And two, the cost of debt has also gone up, which has reduced the cash flow out of the property. Because remember, the cash flow is always the exact same model. You got your income, which is rents. You got your expenses, which of course is property taxes, insurance, utilities, and all the things it takes to run a property. 
Then you have your debt, which you guys know is fluctuating. So debt is going up right now. And of course, cash flow is going down. All things being equal with the income and the expense, if your debt goes up, your cash flow goes down, you're getting further and further and further away from this $2 million, which is, of course, the equity. And the way that people justify it is because they have a capital gain mentality. Capital gain means we believe this property is going to go up in value. So they buy this property at $50 million and they say, oh, we believe it's going to be $60 million. When in theory, as you all know now, these properties are actually worth 40 million. So they buy something at 50 million and they raise $20 million of equity and they have a $2 million payment. And they say they're gonna pay all that back when the property goes to 60. So it's literally just buying something for 50 and making it worth 60, where in fact it's actually 40. So what do you do in this scenario when the value has gone down more than half of the equity cover. and you don't have the cash flow to cover the original equity. And that is precisely the difference between a capital gain strategy and a cash flow strategy. Because when we're buying properties, we're focusing over here. We would have never bought a property that would require $2 million to service the equity out of the cash flow. When yeah. you see a scenario like this, it's essentially gambling. It's literally just waiting for the market to take the property up higher. And a lot of the people that bought properties in the last two or three years, all they've ever seen is a market go like this. What's happening, of course, guys, is the market giveth and the market taketh away. And that's what's happening right now because most of these properties are easily 20, 30, even 40% less in value. And so they don't have a refinance option they don't have cash flow because the interest rates went up. Even if the properties are running well today, the debt is killing them and the value is killing them. So they're stuck. They have no way to return this equity and the interest rates just get them further and further away from the money. And the real problem becomes when they start to bring in new money, which is happening right now, and they start to squeeze down the original equity. And so what I would do is I would buy the property at 40 million. Unfortunately, if you invested in that deal, your money's gone. We would pay back the 30 for the debt because these folks, they don't want to be in trouble with the bank and they wanna buy again, but the equity's gone and I would just have to come up with a little bit of equity to buy this asset and step right into that position. So all things being equal, if I only have 10 million of equity at let's say 10%, now, my cost of equity is 1 million versus 2 million. So that's the difference. So it might be the exact same property, but my cost of equity went down because my equity requirement went down because the property value is also down. And my business model wasn't always like this. Trust me, I've tried everything. I started off with a capital gain model. In fact, I used to buy properties like this and sell them off piece by piece through condo conversions, and of course, growing the value and selling them. And while I made a lot of money, I paid a lot of tax, but at the end of the day, what did I own? Zero. Because I grow it and sell it, scoop the equity and have to do it again. And the reason that this works is when the market goes up. So all of these folks that bought a lot of assets in the last seven or eight years, they all felt really rich for a long period of time but guess what? Now they have to pay the piper. These are all coming back down. And that's why when I switch over to a cash flow model, we didn't buy anything in the last three years. This is precisely what we we're waiting for. Now that the values are down, we're able to actually pay less, have less equity and be able to cover the equity because at the end of the day, who pays everyone back? The lender, the equity, the partnership, all of that. It's the property itself. Always the property pays everyone back. So if you overpay for the property here at 50 and you get caught with the higher interest rates, this is what you get. But if you're able to buy it at lower pricing, which is happening right now and is gonna to continue to happen for a little while, now all of a sudden the deal may make sense. It might not make sense, but it may make sense. That's why 
from my own personal experience, I started on the capital gain side. This is a long-term passive income strategy using the tax laws to pay very little or no tax. This is by far the better strategy. This is precisely why the real estate market could crash. It's because these commercial projects, I just looked at one yesterday where the market value had gone down 75% of the original value. And the lender is now going to be losing this part here. So the equity is gone and the debt is gone. And they're basically selling the property for the land price. As these deals start to crash, values will continue to erode, equity will continue to be lost, and debt will continue to not be paid. This could create a domino effect because what happens is lenders pull back and equity pulls back and there's less and less people actually playing in this market. With all these losses creates massive opportunity and this is precisely what I've been waiting for because you make the most money when you have complicated deals like this and you're working out things with the lenders, with the equity and even potential bankruptcies like on the deal that I just saw. This is part of the business model. And once you have properties that are cash flowing like we do, I can also teach you next on how to generate an infinite return on this exact property. Check that out here.